I've heard a lot about Google recently, but I got to tell you something. I just made a checklist of things that they've done just in the last month or so, and, and none of it was good, right? First, you go back to September 1st. They ignored the Senate hearing. Check. The election outrage that we found out from the video, they hated the fact that Donald Trump was elected. Check. Then it was the tweet about the end of the GOP. Check. And then yesterday, hidden data exposure. They didn't tell anyone. Check. And finally, to top it all off, let's call it the cherry on top. They kicked that Pentagon cloud contract to the curb. Another check. Oh, by the way, they still may help China build that Dragonfly search engine. Double check. All right, here now to discuss Lisa Garber, the cybersecurity and private uh, privacy attorney. Ned Bryan is back with us. Lisa, I just uh, an abundance of things. Let me tell you something. Washington, D.C. is talking about this. Senator Mark Warner put out a litany of tweets. And I mean, he is talking about going after them for keeping the public and Congress in the dark. They refused to go down. He was already upset about that. Uh, they have displayed a certain kind of belligerence that you normally don't see from a publicly traded company. Definitely. They are. Google is very entitled right now. And they're really egging the government on to come after them with some regulation. <laughs> and Google, Twitter, all of these companies are under a microscope, Facebook included, to really try to get in there and regulate and really help with the privacy issues and some of the other problems that these companies are facing. And Google now, by saying we're rejecting this Pentagon bid, we are also dropping off a of Project Maven, which was another government Department of Defense contract they had, and then also saying, well, we're going to help out China. They're looking at these issues through a very fractured ethical prism. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if ethical belongs in the, in the conversation or right. the sentence, but I will say this. You know, it, it, it's, it seems very interesting to me today, the EU uh, now establishing a uh, 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 parameters for fines for the kind of data breach that we saw or learned about yesterday could be up to 20 million pounds, 4% of global income. Also preparing a major antitrust fine against Google. I, you know, to your point, maybe they're egging them on. Maybe they know if there's a lot of legislation, it prevents other smaller companies from ever building up to, to, to challenge them, but it is it is an awkward and weird weird approach that they're taking to all of this. Google is a behemoth. Who's going to come in and tr attempt to compete with them? And that's why Google, Facebook, the companies at these levels do need some sort of interference and regulation because consumers need that to protect their privacy, let alone what the government interaction should be. You know, Ned, we always talk about free, free markets and hey, you know what, just someone uh, put a new Google out there, but it is really tough. It's a tough, I mean, they are well established and it is really going to be a tough nut to crack. In the meantime, it seems like their, their animosity, the vitriolic animosity toward conservatives, toward this administration, uh, it's, it's, it's not fair. Well, I'll tell you what will wake them up, Charles. If we were to go back, and I've said this to you before, go look at the 1996 Telecommunications Act and say there's no, it, there's no more Section 230 uh, exemptions. Mm -hmm. Google, you now get to be defined as a telecommunications company and a publisher. That will wake them up, Charles, because that will open them up to being regulated to some of the uh, FCC oversight, that will be a slap in the face to get them to really start to focus on what uh, they should be focused on is understanding they can't be pushing the envelope like they're doing. I, I, I am stunned actually at this behavior. Let's not forget, Charles, their motto used to be, don't be evil. Well, they <laughs> dropped that motto a few years ago yeah. because I think it'd be a little hard to explain that motto when they're working hand in glove with the world's largest authoritarian police state, China. I am staggered that they are still building this Dragonfly app. President and Vice President Pence actually called them out on it five days ago. And I'll, I'll say this one last thing, Charles. These tech companies need to try and understand and define who are they? Are they American companies or are they global companies? Because they are. Very, I think most of them would choose. The, I think most priorities. of them would choose the latter. Real quick, I got some breaking news, and That's I right. got to ask you your opinion. And in the A block, Ned, you said that you did not like the idea of Dana Powell being a potential uh, candidate uh, replacement for Nikki Haley. President Trump not. says he has five people on his UN ambassadors list, and Dana Powell is indeed on there. He also referenced Rick Rennell, saying that he's someone he would consider, but he'd like to keep him where he is because he's doing so well, and he wouldn't want to move him. But, um, you know, you know, again, everyone agrees Rick has done such an enorm a great job in Germany. So what do you make of the idea of maybe Powell getting back into this administration? No. I mean, I, I cannot be say this strongly enough, Charles. I'm adamantly opposed to Dina Powell representing us at the United Nation. Uh, I think she's a globalist. I do not think she is in simpatico right. with Trump's base. 
I do not think she would actually continue on in the footsteps of Nikki Haley. I'm adamantly opposed to it. So, no, you'll never see me endorsing this at all, period. By the way, you know, I talked about conservatives, but that leads uh, Senator Warner, uh, he was so upset because they didn't show up, but they didn't send the CEO for that Senate hearing. And his last tweet was, the last le line was, it's clear Congress needs to step in. What are your, th your final thoughts on this? Congress does need to step in. And the fact, what really bothers so many privacy professionals and technology professionals about Google not stepping up to the plate repeatedly is that they should want to be part of the conversation, especially because if they are considering themselves right. an American company, the government is going right. to have this technology and all of these capabilities. There is no question. Amazon is bidding. All of these other technology giants are bidding. So why wouldn't Google want to step up instead of saying, we don't want to be part of anything military and yet on the back end yeah. helping China? Really, take a position, <laughs> take a good yeah. position here. It's amazing. Who would have so thought George Orwell's 1948 warning would have been about a company called Google, perhaps Facebook, and a couple others? Thank you both very much. We appreciate it. Folks, we'll be right back.